If you think corporations bought free speech before Now that they're human, they'll buy even more. Yeah, their money has free speech. Together, these two doctrines are actually preventing we, the people of the United States of America, from actually having a functioning democratic republic. And Welcome to Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. This cable access program is just part of the Alliance's effort to create a true democracy and a just society. I am pleased to welcome David Cobb back to our program. It's been a couple of years since we last spoke and had him on the show. David is the chief spokesperson for Move to Men, movetomen.org. He's a lawyer and political activist. He has sued corporate polluters, lobbied elected officials, run for political offices himself, uh, including uh, the as the Green Party candidate for president, and has been arrested for nonviolent civil disobedience. He, truly believes that we must use all the tools in the toolbox to affect the systemic social change we so desperately need. So welcome to the program, David Cobb. Thank you, David Duck. It's a pleasure yeah. to be back. Great, good, good. So uh, why are you in Portland? Well, you know, I'm in Portland because the uh, entire Pacific Northwest is converging on Portland for a Pacific Northwest Social Forum, which is part of the U.S. Social Forum, which is part of the World Social Forum. In other words, there is a process underway across the country where civil society itself is convening. You know, the World Social Forum began in Porto Alegre, Brazil, in rejection of and reaction to the gathering of the World Economic Forum and the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and all the places where unelected and unaccountable uh, corporate CEOs and mega national bankers got together and were planning out the entire economy and world order. Uh, and me and you and others like us, mm -hmm. viewers, would gather and protest at these places. Right. Uh, but because in uh, Brazil a social movement had gotten so broad and deep and conscious and then began running elect elections, that is candidates on the basis of it, they took over the state government uh, and the municipal government in Porto Alegre and decided, hey, when you actually win an election and you win multiple elections and you have majorities, there's all sorts of public infrastructure mm -hmm. in place. And so they convened uh, in uh, 2001 the first World Social Forum where ordinary people and social change agents were invited to gather to imagine another world. It was hugely successful and it has been going on every couple of years, th usually throughout the global south, but somewhere internationally for multiple years. In fact, it was so successful that it spawned a U.S. Social Forum. And you'll love this tagline, David. Uh, the World Social Forum organizes under another world is possible. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. Social Forum said, if another world is possible, another U.S. is necessary. <laughs> yes. And so in 2001, we gathered in, uh, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. 2010, we gathered again in uh, Detroit, Michigan. And in 2015, we're going to actually gather in both San Jose, California, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Jackson, Mississippi, hmm. with satellite locations in Reynosa, Mexico, uh, Montreal, Canada, Vancouver, Canada. So a polycentric site where we're gathering at the same time, then using technology to talk to one another. So we're both broadening oh, and so deepening. Oh, so these are going to happen at the same time? Yes. Oh, interesting. In June of 2015. And as a lead up to that, there have been multiple people's movement assemblies and regional social forums. So all that is a very long way to say this weekend, the Pacific Northwest Social Forum is happening in Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, but we've also been meeting in multiple spots across the country. So another world actually is happening. Right, yeah, right, yeah. And for our viewers, I'll point out that we are recording this on Friday, September 26th. Uh, so the, this weekend, when David refers to this weekend, he's talking about this weekend. You'll all be viewing this program, however, later than that. Right. So I guess I should say, <laughs> so we had a fantastic social forum. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, I really like that tagline that you mentioned uh, because, uh, unfortunately, 
most Americans think that we are the answer <laughs> to the world's problem rather than we are the cause of the world's problems. It's true. Or, or a major contributor to the world's problem. major contributor. And one of the things, I really appreciate you lifting that up, uh, David, because for me, as a social change agent myself, I actually think that we as North Americans need to be much more humble. Mm -hmm. And I mean that sincerely because almost all of the really exciting, cutting-edge, true democracy work, I think, is actually manifesting in the global south. I mean, the Chiapas uprising and, and what Zapatismo represents uh, in, in Ecuador, where they have just codified the rights of nature in their federal constitution. Mm -hmm. You know, Evo Morales uh, being elected, a, an indigenous person being elected to govern as president. Uh, in Bolivia, uh, you know, I mean, we just look everywhere we look, we see that the social movements are much broader, they're deeper, and frankly, they're more politically mature mm -hmm. than they are in this country. I mean, we have actually been so thoroughly propagandized uh, around, you know, the sort of chant of USA, USA, mm -hmm. and we don't really know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that's, that's true, and unfortunately, we don't know very much, <laughs> <laughs> even about our own country. True. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you you are here uh, primarily uh, on the show because you are the chief spokesman for Move to Mend. Yes. Right. And so talk about Move to Mend and where that came from. Well, thank you, David. You know, uh, Move to Mend is a multiracial, multiethnic coalition of groups and individuals from across the country that are coming together to demand a constitutional amendment to abolish two completely illegitimate court-created legal doctrines. The first, the idea that a corporation must be treated as if it's a person with inherent inalienable constitutional rights of a human being, which is, of course, crazy on its face. Mm -hmm. uh, the second doctrine that we are committed to overturning via constitutional amendment is the equally odious, also court-created idea that money equals political speech. Together, these two doctrines are actually preventing we, the people of the United States of America, from actually having a functioning democratic republic. And where it came from was, you know, look, your viewers probably are aware of the, the Supreme Court decision of Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission. Well, uh, I saw that case uh, bubbling up in the lower courts in 2009, and I knew it would be bad. And so in 2009, I actually called together a, a group of organizations and people that I had worked for for 15 years or more on corporate power issues. The Alliance for Democracy uh, was one of those organizations. And I said, look, y'all, this is going to be bad, but we could actually use it to actually really spark a populist uprising against what I knew was going to be a bad court decision. Well, Citizens United was a horrible court decision. It basically gutted campaign finance laws in this country, and it said that because corporations are persons with constitutional rights, the restrictions on corporate expenditures, uh, indirect expenditures in federal elections are no more. So you now see literally billions of dollars being spent in local, state, and federal elections that would not have been possible before. But even deeper, what we're seeing is a people's response, just as predicted. And I want to really anchor this, David. Mm -hmm. We began as about 15 people in the living room in Northern California in 2009. We launched on January of 2010 when the Supreme Court decision issued its opinion. 2010, we're 15 people. Today, we're 369,000 people and growing every day. We have about 120 local affiliates across this country. We have helped 600 communities pass resolutions of support of our campaign. That is, city council members or county governments uh, passing resolutions to support us. And we've helped 16 states pass resolutions of support. But the thing I'm most proud to say is we've been on the ballot 200 times. That is, not just city council members voting, you know, five or seven mm -hmm. or nine people, but the entire community getting to vote on whether they support a constitutional amendment to abolish corporate constitutional rights and money as speech. Mm -hmm. David, we've been on the ballot 200 times. Guess how many times we've won? 200 times. 200 times. <laughs> we haven't lost yet. And yeah. yes, that includes San Francisco, California, and Madison, Wisconsin, and Boston, Massachusetts. You know, the progressive bastions. Mm -hmm. You know where else we've won? Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm -hmm. We've won in Waukesha, Wisconsin. 
which is the hometown of Tea Party Republican Governor Scott Walker, hmm. where they haven't voted for a Democrat for Congress or president in over 50 years. Move to Men was on the ballot in the last spring election. We won there. We were on the ballot in the state of Montana in a statewide referendum. I mean, anybody think that Montana's suddenly been overrun by a bunch of liberal hippies? No. no. I mean, we know what that mm -hmm. culture is, right? Move to Men was on the ballot there, David, and we won. Everywhere we've been able to simply present to the American people the idea of amending the Constitution to abolish corporate constitutional rights and money as speech, we win, usually by super majorities. Mm -hmm. Right. And here in Oregon, we had it on the ballot four, in four communities, Salem, Eugene, uh, Lincoln County and the Corvallis, mm -hmm. uh, and in all of those, they were o over 70% approval. Yes, I, I mean, in, right. fa in fact, that, that's one of the things. Every one of yours was over 70%. Mm -hmm. Usually we hit around 60 to 75%. Each one of the Oregon votes mm -hmm. was over 70%. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah. So we'll see if we can do something uh, more. Uh, and of course, as you know, we are planning on, and we have written an initiative for the November 2016 ballot here in Oregon, mm -hmm. and uh, we're having a little difficulty at the moment, uh, but we'll per, you know, persevere and, and uh, get it on the ballot. Well, yeah, I, there's no doubt in my mind that, that Oregonians are gonna get the opportunity to vote on mm -hmm. this. I think it's uh, unfortunate uh, that the leadership of the Democratic Party uh, is trying to prevent this from happening. But, you know, look, yeah. here's what I and know. I, 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 want, I want to emphasize that. The leadership of the Democratic Party, right. because normally people think that this is going to be opposed by Republicans. Right. Not necessarily the case. Right. It, it isn't the case. And it's interesting, the leadership of the Democratic Party is opposed to it. The rank and file members of the Democratic Party are huge supporters. But you know what else? The rank and file membership of the Republican Party are huge supporters, mm -hmm. as are Greens and Libertarians, Independents alike. I mean, this is a non partisan issue because it has such, it's really transpartisan, David. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we've gone, we've gotten huge support from ordinary folks, regardless of what political party they're in, regardless of how they self-describe their ideology. Because I think it, it's worth just saying it out loud, David. I think that principal liberals have been lied to and sold out by the uber leadership of the Democratic Party, who are basically carrying the water for and taking their orders from Wall Street America and the big banks just as surely as principal conservatives have been lied to and mm -hmm. sold out by the uber leadership of the Republican Party, who are carrying water for and taking their orders from Wall Street America and the big bankers. Ordinary Americans, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, Independents, Greens, Libertarians, are actually united on the cause that Move to Men represents. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, so so you, you've painted this picture of uh, not a Republican Democrat divide or necessarily a conservative liberal divide, but a divide between the elites and the rest of us. Uh, you're exactly right, David, and that's one of the reasons why I was so inspired whenever I heard that this program is called the Populist Dialogues. I mean, because like this is really a populist issue. Mm -hmm. Like th this is one that is popular, but it also goes to the heart of are we going to have a functioning democratic republic? You know. There's going to be legitimate disagreements between political po positions, right? Mm -hmm. Policy proposals, okay. we should debate those, right? And, and mm -hmm. there's going to be differences of opinion. But whether or not we have a democratic republic, whether or not we the people are sovereign, but individual rights are still respected, that's something that there is almost universal support amongst ordinary folks. Mm -hmm. So you're right, this is a very populist uh, issue and it's not left, right, it's up, down. It's mm -hmm. elites versus the rest of us. Right, yeah. So uh, I, I think most people who know about uh, Move to Mend associate it with trying to enact a specific type of constitutional amendment that says corporations are not people and that money is not speech. Uh, but I know that when you talk about move to men and what needs to happen, you talk about creating a democracy movement. Talk more about that. Well, thank you for that opportunity, David, and you're absolutely right. You see, look, I wanna be clear. I am going to be part of a movement that successfully amends the United States Constitution to abolish corporate constitutional rights and money as speech. In order to do that, 
we have to build a mass movement. You see, this is not just a legal problem. This is a political and cultural problem about the fact that a small ruling elite have stolen our sacred right to self-government. And as a lawyer, what really pisses me off is that they're using the legal system to legalize the theft of our sacred right to self-government. So it's going to take a mass movement, and that mass movement must be broad, it must be deep, it must be conscious and aware. It must be educated. We have to really understand how power works in this country. We have to come to terms with how racism and white supremacy has worked in this country, how uh, gender oppression has happened in this country, uh, how patriarchy works, uh, how uh, straight folks have been unduly privileged through virtually every single aspect of society. See, we have, we have to deal with age discrimination, both against the aged and the youth. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing, David, at the core of it, what we have to understand is a small ruling elite have divided us amongst, uh, uh, amongst ourselves so that frequently we find ourselves fighting with each other and not really seeing that, oh, there is a ruling elite who are actually making money on virtually everything that we don't like. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you actually take polls of the American people, David, the overwhelming majority of the American people actually have some common agreement on a number of issues that are not implemented. The majority of Americans actually would like to see and have access to health care as a fundamental human right, and yet health care is still commodified as a profit. Uh, the majority of Americans would like to see us transition away from coal and oil and other fossil fuels that are causing the global climate crisis, and yet those energy corporations and those energy sectors completely control energy policy in this mm -hmm. country. I could go on and on about the polling data showing that the majority of Americans want different policies, but we can't implement them because we haven't built a movement that is big enough and powerful enough to actually take on the, the ruling elite of mm -hmm. this era. Okay, well you, you, you've outlined a, uh, a very, very large agenda, uh, which uh, I hope that you and Move to Amend uh, and all of us are able to, uh, to accomplish. So, uh, so um, there are a, a number of proposed constitutional amendments now in Congress. In fact, uh, the Senate voted on one of them called the Udall Amendment. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about what that amendment does mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to you know, what we would support? Yes, the, the Udall Amendment would have given Congress the authority to regulate elections. Pure and simple. Uh, and, and, and the states. And the states. Mm -hmm. uh, it did not, however, deal with corporate constitutional rights. And I want to be clear, David, that corporate constitutional rights as a doctrine allows corporate lawyers to go into court to challenge and frequently overturn environmental protection laws, worker safety laws, public health laws, public policy, as well as campaign finance laws. So we at Move to Men do not believe that just money in elections is the problem. And if this were just a legislative approach, then we could say, yes, absolutely, we support legislation giving Congress and the states more power to, to regulate elections. But it is our belief as a strategic matter, as a tactical matter, that we're really going to get one opportunity for a constitutional amendment to, uh, to deal with this. Basically, this comes along every couple of three generations, mm -hmm. moments like this. So we want to get it right, and we want to actually build the movement that we really need in this country to address corporate power or really corporate rule. Because let's be honest, David, these corporate corporations are not just exercising power today. They're ruling us. Mm -hmm. As surely as masters once ruled slaves or kings once ruled subjects, unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs are ruling us because they're making the decisions. So because the Udall proposal was about a constitutional amendment, we thought it was a compromise before the real fight really began. So mm -hmm. we did not support it because it did not address corporate constitutional rights. Okay, all right. And uh, there, there is a specific amendment that was introduced mm -hmm. into Congress, which we do support. Absolutely. It's right. called We the People Amendment. It was introduced originally uh, by Representative Nolan out of Duluth. Uh, very quickly, we've gotten uh, several co-sponsors to, uh, to join. It's uh, House Joint Resolution 29. Uh, and I want to be uh, very candid about something, David. We're, 
we, we went faster than I thought. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that we would be at least five, 10 years into it before we were able to actually go into uh, Congress, but we had congressional representatives beginning to come to us. So this movement is growing and it's getting larger, stronger, better organized every day. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I was on the, the congress.gov website and I looked the bill up recently and saw that there are only four co-sponsors. Mm -hmm. But I did want to say to our Oregon uh, viewers that I, I am on the uh, State Council of the Oregon Progressive Party and we interviewed Representative DeFazio uh, for an endorsement and we did uh, end up endorsing him. Uh, we specifically asked him whether he supported amending the Constitution to say that corporations are not people and money is not speech as opposed to, for instance, this Udall Amendment and he very specifically said yes. Wow, that's fantastic yes. news. So, and this, David, I really want to be clear about something. I don't care whether a candidate for office is an incumbent or a challenger. I don't care if a candidate for office is a Democrat, a Republican, a Green, a Libertarian, or an Independent. What you just described the Oregon Progressive Party doing is exactly what we need to do to build a movement that is independent, both financially independent, but politically independent, and say, this is the movement demand, and we're going to challenge you, who is seeking our vote. Mm -hmm. Again, doesn't matter what party you're with, we need to know your position on this. And we're gonna educate our growing number of people about where candidates stand on this issue. And so what you've just described is phenomenal, it is good, grassroots organizing at its finest, and the fact that it doesn't matter what political party somebody's with. I want to know their position on corporate constitutional rights and money of speech. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, it, it does seem that uh, you, with this Udall Amendment that the, with the Democrats moving on it when they did, knowing that it would not be supported by Republicans, that they really turned or tried to turn it into a partisan issue? There's no doubt that that was the effort, David. And in fact, uh, it, I, if you followed the, uh, uh, the Inside Baseball on Politico uh, website, uh, Democratic uh, Whip Senator uh, Reed of Nevada was actually angry because uh, it, it went to a vote so quick and they weren't able to actually use it going in oh. <laughs> uh, into the elections. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was, I thought, a bit of shameful gamesmanship, and it wasn't actually an effort to build this movement. But this movement is happening. Mm -hmm. It's not dependent upon the leadership of either political party. Mm -hmm. How much time do you spend traveling and talking? You know, David, uh, back when I, were, I was a local community organizer, I used to, it used to take me two, three, even four months to convince a local community to host a workshop. You mm -hmm. did that for us mm -hmm. about five, six, maybe, gosh, a decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember yeah, very yeah, well. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I could never go home. If I wanted to just stay on the road every single night doing a different workshop, a different lecture, a different seminar, I could. I'm currently on the road between one half and two thirds of my life, literally in a different community every night usually. And again, David, I'm not famous. Mm -hmm. You know, people aren't coming to hear David Cobb. They're coming because they've heard of something called Move to an End. They've heard of a democracy movement. They want to get involved. And so I'm going to make an appeal to your viewers right now. If you haven't yet joined movetoamend.org, please go to the website. Mm -hmm. Maybe somewhere along here, either now or at the end of the program, it'll be up there for you. Mm -hmm. We make it super easy. And if you don't have access to the web, you can give us a call at 707 269 0984 and we'll get you plugged in and I know that uh, you have viewers all across the country mm -hmm. uh, David Delk so wherever you are we probably have a local group that we can get you plugged into right yeah and it really is important you know that uh, more and more people be involved uh, and Move to Men has this pledge to amend. We do. So we've only got uh, three minutes left, and I need some of that, but talk about the pledge to amend. Well, pledge to amend is an effort to do exactly what they are, they've done in Oregon with the Progressive Party, which is to go to candidates for office and simply ask their position. Will you support a constitutional amendment to abolish corporate constitutional rights and money as speech? And then we're going to let our membership know what the candidate's position is, yes, no, or decline to respond. And, and uh, again, we're moving very quickly on this. So we're very excited to hear the success you've had in Oregon, mm -hmm. and we want to do this all across the country. Right, and, and here in Oregon, we have also the Portland 
uh, move to Mend and the other affiliates of Move to Mend have come together with some other community organizations uh, like Oregon Common Cause and others to do this same kind of Pledge to Amend campaign where we're reaching out to candidates uh, uh, and, and asking them to, 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 right. to pledge. And not just for Congress, but state legislatures, yes. county commissioners, city councils, dog catcher. <laughs> if you're running for office, we, we're going to make you take a position because this is probably the defining moment about whether we're going to have a functioning Democratic Yeah, and, and, and those people running for those offices are going to some of them will succeed and some of them will go to the next level right. and the next level. I like to say this, David, that the people who are going to pass the We the People Amendment are not in Congress now, but they are already born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> right. many of them are in state legislatures right. right now. Great. Thank you very much, David. David, thank you so much. Thanks right. for the opportunity. You bet. Our guest today has been David Cobb, Chief Spokesperson for Move to Men, which is organizing to amend the U.S. Constitution. But in a larger sense, as David has said, it is organizing a democracy movement. Specifically, Move to Men calls for a 28th constitutional amendment to declare clearly that corporations are not people and that money is not speech and should be subject to regulation at all levels of government. Uh, to learn more about Move to Men and sign their petition, go to movetomen.org. Don't forget that you can watch Populist Dialogues on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash Populist Dialogues to view most of our past shows. And when you're there, click the subscribe button so when a new program is uploaded, you will automatically receive an email notification. Populist Dialogues is a project of the Portland Alliance for Democracy. Learn more about us at afd-pdx.org and about our national organization at thealliancefordemocracy.org. Thank you to Roger Bates, Brad Leach, Ellery Nelson, and Lori Sutton for their volunteer time getting us on the air today. And to all of you, thank you for watching. I hope that we'll see you again in two weeks. Bye. If you think corporations bought free speech before, now that they're human, they'll buy even more. Yeah, their money has free speech to me, quite a shock. Cause I never heard my money talk. When a corporation has a colonoscopy, then I'll believe they're human like me.